Happy Tuesday. Thank you for coming back and joining me today. Yesterday we talked a little bit about how Abraham and Sarah had uh, been made that promise by God that they would have descendants and they were they were old and nothing had happened up to that point. So they kind of took matters into their they and kind of they took matters into their own hands and you know Sarah gave her slave to Abram and Abram slept with her and she conceived. And today I want to talk a little bit about impatience with God. You know, do you have it? You know, um, he wanted, you know, God had promised him something and, you know, God promises us things too, you know, and, and I think about the fact that Abraham and Sarah, they, they wanted their blessing, but they wanted it on their own timing, you know, not understanding that, you know, Ecclesiastes tells us there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. God's timing is not our timing. And in our impatience, we can make just a ton of bad decisions. Even thinking forward that we would want to receive the blessings of God and we think that by doing certain things, we would receive them maybe a little bit quicker than God had ever intended for us to have them. Proverbs in the Passion Translation says, the best way to live is with revelation knowledge, but without it, you'll grow impatient and run right into errors. So what were some of the errors that we see that Abraham makes in that first section of scripture in Genesis 16? Well, the first error that we know he makes is even though society would say it was okay for him to have more wives than one, we know that God's plan was for one man and one woman because it says that they, the two would become one flesh. And so it doesn't say that two and a half or three or four would become one flesh or two fleshes. It was only made for one man and one woman. The other mistake that Abraham makes is it's evident to me. I mean, I could never imagine disrespecting my wife in that way. You know, he had already sent her off saying that she was his sister and, and allowed Pharaoh to take her as his wife and, and, and understanding what that ultimately meant. You know, he, he so again, he does that. He says he doesn't ever stop and say, you know, just because society says I can do this, I'm not going to do this to you. And then I think the biggest mistake that Abraham makes in this whole thing, and we're going to get into the story of Hagar maybe uh, by Thursday, and it's a long story, is he used another human being without her real consent, she had no choice to receive his blessing. And I, I, I totally think that we're capable of doing that today. You know, we may not be Abraham, but we can be a husband, we can be a coworker, a boss, you know, we can be anybody that we would say, you know, God has shown me what he wants to give me. I believe this in God. So I'm going to do whatever it takes and use whoever I have to to get there. And you may not be doing that intentionally. You may say, no, I don't, I don't think I do that intentionally. But I ask you to stop and really look at the people in your sphere of influence. And as you're chasing after God's blessing, are you harming any of those people in any way? Because it says, you know, in, in verse 4, he slept with her. Not only did he just agree, it, it didn't even say that he argued the point with his wife. No, this isn't a good idea. I probably shouldn't do this. What is this going to do to our relationship? It just says he agreed. And so he goes off and he sleeps with this woman. And, and, and I look at that and I think that just doesn't feel right. You know, and is there anything that you're doing in your day to day life that if you really just stop, say, you know, I'm trying to follow God with all my heart. I'm trying to do what it is and be obedient to God. But this interaction that I'm having with this person right now in front of me just doesn't feel right. You know, the Holy Spirit is in us to teach us all that it says. It teaches us all that Jesus commanded us. So it guides us. It reminds us of things. Is the Spirit reminding you of something right now? Is the Spirit reminding you that the way that I'm treating another person just doesn't feel like the way I should be doing it. And if the Spirit is telling you that, I ask you to stop and assess what it is that you're doing. And maybe 
choose something different because God's timing is perfect. Our timing is usually flawed. So I bless you today. I, I ask that God would give you a sense of peace and direction in your life. Tomorrow we're going to talk about Sarah. And then for the rest of the week, we're going to talk about Hagar. We're going to talk about how God intervenes with those who have been hurt. And I think that's the nature of God. God intervened on our behalf. He intervened on hers. He blessed her. It's just a beautiful story that I can't wait to get to. But for today, God bless you. God keep you. God shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May God turn towards you and give you peace today. Love you, Yosemite Church, and talk to you soon.